Opening shot of a bustling school courtyard in a show about a school cliche. I mean, I'm as down for an authority can't use technology joke as the next guy, which is not at all. But what exactly did he do to mess this up? He's nowhere near that thing when it starts going haywire, so it's either possessed by the Dean ghosts of Greendale past, or a writer conveniently put it in the script. I'd love for it to be the former, but I'm guessing it's the latter. There is so much going on with this random college crowd. First, there are way too many students stopped and intently listening to this non-mandatory nonsense. Second, why are they all spread out? Pretty sure social distancing guidelines weren't in effect 10 years ago, and if you were really going to listen to this, wouldn't you get a little closer? Speaking of which, how could she possibly be hearing anything from back there? No boom box booms its box with that much boom. And if it did, what about this guy? He is far too close to the podium. And before you say that he may be hard of hearing and wanted to be near the speaker, he has his headphones in. But then also when the angle changes, he's no longer creeping up on the stage, so clearly he's a wizard and poof the f out of there. And this is clearly Rapunzel. You know what? I bet this is that magical college that the dead dad from Onward went to because, friends, that is a centaur. Let me just draw the little horsey legs and, yep, I knew it, centaur. And now you know that this is the most interesting thing that will happen in this episode. You're welcome. Remedial teens, 20-something dropouts, middle-aged divorcees. Why just exposition your character's backstories with a conveniently specific Dean speech when you can insult and degrade them at the same time? Okay, guys, keep talking. Don't move. Don't move, wait for it, wait for it. Now walk as if it's the natural time to start walking like normal humans and not because the camera is finally in position. Holy crap, Abed, I see your value now. Viewing other people as objects to be used for your own narcissistic personal gain, or as we've come to know it in 2020, introducing the show's main character. Jeff Winger. Unsilvered John Oliver is not educating me about the world's problems and making me laugh at the same time in this scene. This poster of a lobster with a tiny penis is never explained. The state bar has suspended my license. Uh, they found out my college degree was less than legitimate. But you don't actually have to have a college degree to practice law. Sure, it's only a few states and there's an apprenticeship program, but if it's good enough for Abraham Lincoln and Clarence Darrow, then it's good enough for Jeff Winger. And now they've switched this poster out because those are clearly the hooves of a lamb being born breech. And it has a tiny penis? What is going on? I thought you had a bachelor's from Columbia. And now I have to get one from America. Yeah, okay, people don't remember this level of detail about each other's lives. Or am I peopling wrong? Okay, I'm, I'm officially confused. Now they've put a poster of two puppets coming out of a black hole, and the black hole has a tiny penis. What I'm saying is this continuity department has completely dropped the ball on this absolutely meaningless poster. Yeah, you, ha you have insulted the integrity of this entire institution. Oi! <laughs> Waster, not a bathroom. But how did you even know he was back there taking a leak? You never once turned around before you got up to reprimand him. Do you have like ESP or something? Also, there are better ways to deter a persistent pisser problem, like a motion sensitive fan to blow the pisser's piss onto their own clothing. Whoosh, pisser pisses off after being pissed off for being pissed on. And if I wanted to learn something, I wouldn't have come to community college. I understand that not every community college is great, but a better priced education to at least get your basics out of the way can be a good option. Plus, most people aren't really sure what they want to do with their career path and getting affordable education can help clear those questions up. Anyway, the whole premise of this show is built on educational elitism, and that's definitely a sin. These hot dogs are clearly uncooked, and raw dogging is a surefire path to unexpected complications. Also, is Fletch so wealthy he doesn't understand the basic idea of a hot dog resting in a bun? Or how to condiment correctly? What's the tax bracket for so elite that you can't even figure out how to hot dog? Whoa, whoa, the guy who's playing Bejeweled on his iPhone all class has a study group? iPhone? Sorry, Britta, for Jeff, it must constantly be June because it's always Blackberry season. All right, you want to know my deal? Come on, writers. Give us an attractive woman lead that doesn't cave to a handsome man's relentless assholey advances. They've set her up as strong-willed and hard to crack, but after one barely clever line, she's starting to open up. And sure, she sees through his bullshit and sets him up later, but I'm saying right here at the start, I would have rather seen her reinforce her defenses because Winger is way creepy. I got tear gassed at a World Trade rally. Man. Show's credits say this was directed by the Russo brothers, but this mention of tear gassing doesn't cut to a flashback involving spandex outfits and quick-cut incoherent action moment, so I'm doubtful. You tell me the truth, I will like you. You lie to me, I will never talk to you again. That's Except that in a few minutes when you discover Jeff is absolutely lying to you, you overlook your rule to continue the plot of the show. So who's the liar now, liar? Put your contact info down right there. That's great. Cool. I really like this cool, cool, cool catchphrase. Glad it will never become overplayed to the point of parody and then co-opted by a completely different sitcom in four years. 
This is kind of like Breakfast Club, huh? On one hand, this is a clear-cut violation of the Explaining Your References ruling of 1823. But on the other hand, Abed is pretty much a character brilliantly invented by the show to explain and meta-contextualize all the show's pop culture references. But on the other other hand, rules are rules. And that's why I have three hands, because my third hand was made for Synod. Well, I get a little doozy in the chamber if things get emotional. Wow, I thought I was the only one who excuses myself in uncomfortable emotional moments to take a stress There's a guy trying out for the track team that is holding the game of poker. Winger is basically the physical embodiment of being excellent at TV sense. And now I hate myself. At the start of this odd track meeting, all these people are running toward their left. Then as the camera angle changes, the runners are in the background running the opposite direction. Look at them go. But suddenly, they're going the other direction? Anyway, f running, right? But I invited more people from Spanish class. Is that cool? Inclusivity is fantastic. All for it. But why were all of these people just hanging out on campus? How did they all happen to have the free time for this one block of time? No one left campus to go home for the day? These people stay in here until dark, and I just have a hard time believing they'd hang out on campus past lunch through to nightfall for the absolute fuster cluck that is about to happen. Study first and then go to dinner. She has a cigarette in her hand when gesturing, but then doesn't have one when she turns, and that means she is a cigaletterer. Plus, her hair stays in those perfectly shaped curls that you get with a flat iron. Britta is basically a conglomeration of all the worst people ever. They will be untutorable. You said intolerable wrong. My name is Pierce Hawthorne, and yes. What about Jeff's character makes us think he would ever, under any circumstances, crawl up onto a table to accept a handshake? The real Jeff would greet that handshake by snarking it back into oblivion. No, Dad, what about you? <laughs> Dang it, Abed. You keep breaking the rule of the references, but I can't help but love you. Fine, take a sin off for Danny Pooty. What can I say? Sins fall out all the time. The world's an imperfect place. I want leather seats with built-in ball warmers. That is not what they are called. I believe the agreed upon official gender neutral name is worshiping at the burning bush. I want to say something. Sit down. Why are any of these people hanging out this long for a Spanish tutor? Go online and find a tutorial group. Oh wait, this is the year Susan Boyle went viral and Kanye hacked Taylor's VMA speech. Nothing else online existed that year, so I guess this is a sin for Susan and Kanye? You know what makes humans different from other animals? Feet. No, 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 come on, bears have feet. Can you believe they got comic legend Chevy Chase on this show? He's gonna be such a mentor and peacemaker behind the scenes and assure his place on this show for years to come. Abed's a shaman. You ask him to pass the salt, he gives you a bowl of soup. I know Captain McAssad here is riffing and none of this means anything, but I just want to point out if anyone gave me soup when I asked for salt, I would leave the table and never return. Unless it was my own table and then I'd leave the table, turn off the lights and watch them on my home security system until they left, arm the security system and then block them on Twitter. Because you know what? Soup is better. Joe McHale slips in a reference to his previous gig where he made snarky comments about clips from TV shows, a format that I'm sure I don't have to tell you could never work. I hereby pronounce you a community. Roll commune commercials. Now it's like stripes or meatballs, anything with Bill Murray. You mean like Caddyshack or SNL? Because Pierce might have some thoughts about why there's an actor who looks exactly like him in this world. And I'm happy to share them with anyone whose time I've wasted more than they wasted mine. I'm gonna go ahead and skip over the part where I point out all the ways that Britta never wasted anyone's time and go straight to the part where I give this show all the sins for the inevitable up romance that is blossoming like a corpse flower before me. I haven't taken the time to do any research, of course, but I'm just going to make the assumption that yes, they in this will they won't they manipulative nightmare scape and ask that Cinny adds as many sins as they feel necessary. Just 15? Hail Cinny full of grace, I guess. People been clowning me about this jacket since I got here, but if I take it off to make them happy, that just makes me weak, right? Mildish Gambino seeks advice from a random jerk he just met because that's what passes his character development in this episode. You just wrinkled my brain, man. Your brain was already wrinkled. Learning new things does not add more wrinkles. That's an urban legend. Pretty sure the wrinkles are just a pruning effect from your brain swimming in the brain fluid too long. If you want to come back upstairs, I... Really? Well, it is your study group. All of these people want to learn Spanish with a man they now know does not speak any Spanish. What is even happening right now? I'm sorry I called you Michael Douglas and I see your value now. But, but, what has changed since you all outed him as a liar four minutes ago? What revelation have you all had sitting on the steps listening to him give inflated heartless advice? Nothing has changed, but TV show's got a TV show, I guess. La, 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 la. And that's one too many Breakfast Club references. Sorry, you mess with the bull and you get the sins. In fact, now you get two sins. Me sinning you and you sinning the floor. Or something. For, you. for some reason, you all want to wear the CinemaSins Pitchfork M on your body. So we slapped that f***er on some new merch and threw it in the store. Posters, hoodies, tanks, socks, leggings. Click on the merch below the YouTube player or click the store link at CinemaSins.com. You really think any of these buns are going to line up to get filled by you? For Hefe. My name is Jeff. 
Hey, Jefe, man. I guess, Jeff, my deal is above all else, honesty. And love. But even more than that, Bert, is the honesty. Oven in the house. Woo! Whoa! 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 Do you have something balled up inside of you? I'm gonna roll you into a little ball and shove you up my vagina. You're bored and you know it. You wouldn't be here if there wasn't something missing. Arrogant son of a bitch. I mean, you look like Elizabeth Shue. Maybe we can call a truce. Yeah, I'm not at war. I can pick up this pencil, tell you its name is Steve, and go like this. Steve! You know, I've been divorced seven times. And obviously, there are plenty of shopping days left until adultery's adulthood. 